What makes someone extraordinary? Their abilities? Their talent? Or simply, their smile? When I first met Nick Vujicic, I knew I had just encountered someone extraordinary. From the moment he began to share his amazing story with me, I witnessed firsthand how God is using a man with no arms and no legs to be God's hands and his feet. My dad was saying that he was, you know, his head was next to my mum's head as uh, as I was being born, and he saw my shoulder, and he just went pale. He was hoping my mum didn't see me because he saw that I had no right arm. And my dad had to leave the room, and he couldn't believe what he saw. And the doctor came in, and my dad said, "My son, he has no right arm," and he says, "No, your son has no arms or legs." And he said he nearly fell on the floor. He couldn't believe it. And the whole church was mourning. You know, like why would God let the pastor's son be born that way? And my mum, at first, she she didn't want to hold me. She didn't want to, you know, breastfeed me and all that.、Um, she just felt very uncomfortable for the first four months. And it took them quite a while before they could trust in God that He didn't make a mistake, that He didn't forget them or me. Nick's parents gave their fear and even disappointment in their son's disability over to the Lord. They chose to trust God and His promise that He had a plan and purpose, a hope and a future for their son. But as the years passed, Nick, on the other hand, had many challenges trusting in a God that he felt gave him less. I challenged God. I said, God, I know that I'm a sinner. I know. Then I won't probably have peace until you're in my heart, but I will not let you in my heart until you answer me. Why? Why did you take my arms and legs? Why didn't you give me what everybody else has? And I said, God, until you answer me that question, I will not serve you. And so I wanted to end it. If God wasn't going to end my pain, I was going to end it myself. So at age eight, I tried to drown myself in a bathtub of four inches of water. I told my mum and dad, "I'm just going to relax in the bathtub. Can you put me in the bathtub?" And、uh, yeah, I turned over a couple times to see if I could do it. I couldn't do it.、Um, the thought that stopped me from going through with it was the love for my parents, because、um, I, I love them so much, and all they did was love me. And I thought to myself. If I actually went through with this, I pictured my funeral, I pictured my parents, and also was guilt on their shoulders that they couldn't have done more. That would be the last time Nick would attempt suicide, but it wouldn't be the last time he would come face to face with those deep issues that made him want to end the pain. Then one day, Nick's mother had him read an article about a severely disabled man. And that man's story made a huge impact on Nick. <laughs> I have a choice to either be angry at God for what I don't have, or be thankful for what I do have. And my mom, she said, Nick, God's going to use you. I don't know how, I don't know when, but God's going to use you. And those seeds started penetrating in my heart. And that's when I started seeing that there is no point in being complete on the outside when you're broken on the inside. And I found out that God can heal you without changing a circumstance. I gave my life to Jesus Christ when I read John 9 at age 15, where a man was coming through a village, and a man,、um, this this blind man from birth, Jesus saw him. People said, "Why was this man born that way?" Jesus said, "It was done so that the works of God may be revealed through him." And、in Second Timothy three verse sixteen, it says, "All Scripture is God breathed," and I believe God breathed in me life and faith. This faith came over me. This peace came over me, and I felt like God answered my question. And what Lord, was the question? And what was the answer? The question was, "Why? Why did you make me this way?" And the answer was, "Do you trust me?" 
That's the question. And when you say yes to that question, nothing else matters. But what was it specifically for you that made you say, Lord, I'm going to trust your word because I know it's true. I'm going to trust you even if I don't know what you have in store for me tomorrow. Right. Because there was nothing else I could find. Mm. There was nothing else that could give me peace. I knew arms and legs wouldn't give me peace anyway, arms and legs alone. Um, I needed to know the truth of who I am, why I'm here, and where I'm going when I'm not here. And I haven't found that truth anywhere else but in Jesus Christ. And it was in Jesus Christ where Nick found the strength to do what many thought would be the impossible. It's so hard to be strong when people constantly say, you're not good enough, you, you know, go away, you know, we don't want anything to do with you. Nick, you're a nobody. Nick, you can't do this. Nick, you can't do that. Nick, 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 Nick. In life, if you don't know the truth, then you can't be free because then you'll believe that the lies are the truth. But once we realize that when we read the Word of God and you know the truth of who you are, I am not a man without arms and legs. I'm a, I am a child of God. I am forgiven of my sins. I'm an ambassador of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I'm nothing but a servant of the Most High God. This is not about Nick. It's not about Nick's capacity and capability to become this conqueror. I am nothing. I'm nothing. God, though, lives in me, and I now live in His strength. And whatever Jesus conquered, I conquer. I believe if God doesn't give you a miracle, you are a miracle of God for somebody else's salvation. And I thank God that He didn't answer my prayer when I was begging Him for arms and legs at age 8. Because guess what? Because I have no arms and no legs, He's using me all around the world. And we've seen so far, approximately, uh, this is conservative, 200,000 souls come to Jesus Christ for the very first time in the last six, seven years. And what would you rather? Would you rather have arms and legs, Nick, here on earth and no arms and... No. Whatever His will is. Because I'd rather have no arms and no legs temporarily here on earth to be able to reach someone else for Jesus Christ and then spend eternity with them there. In the last decade, Nick has shared his story in 24 countries to over 3 million people. And whether he's talking to a stadium packed with people or one single person, his heart behind the message is the same. God loves you, that He hasn't forgotten your pain, He hasn't forgotten your family. And maybe while you're watching this interview, you've compared your suffering to my suffering. And that's not where hope is, to know that someone else, in your opinion, is suffering more than you. That's not where hope is. But hope is in the name of God, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hope is when you compare your suffering to the infinite, immeasurable love and grace of God. Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength that shall mount up on wings as eagles. I didn't need my circumstance to change. I don't need arms and legs. I need the wings of the Holy Spirit. And I'm flying because I know Jesus is holding me up. Don't give up on God, because God will not give up on you.